All right, checking in with you since I last left you. We were on cleanup, we're still on cleanup. I was doing a lot of engine work. Again, all the major components, alternator, water pump, filters, so on and so forth, fuel filter. That's gonna be on a different channel if you are interested in working on a G30, G20 Chevrolet van. Most older Chevrolets are gonna be the same exact with uh, the placement of the parts. Anyway, that channel is always listed below. That's my car channel, DIY Save Cash. So we have taken out the black, backing uh kind of the work thing and that's just for i don't know if that's preventative so that like pipes don't come crashing through the windshield or parts or just work guys like that kind of thing i'm not really sure I, I'm, I'm assuming it's for safety reasons and then maybe also privacy for your tools i'm not really sure anyway that partition is right here that side and then the other side is over here the right rack is outside and that screw rack is right there that's actually a really heavy duty rack i'm gonna probably paint that take out the little organization things or just keep it like this for a nuts and parts thing and corner of the shop or remove all the partitions paint it black and i could use that as a dumbbell weight stand once it's freshly painted black that would look really sharp so either or all right we do have a bike rack on we'll talk about that later so as you can see now that really opened up the van i mean i'm talking a lot so now you have your kind of your empty shell okay so now what we're going to do the next steps is we're going to continue to remove this old dampening carpet that were on the wheel wells i already ripped off that old crappy vinyl factory vinyl i am also going to remove this plywood I wasn't thinking about it but if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it right number one I want to see if there's any rust that has gone from the middle area up by the engine back and number two we're gonna be putting kill mat on here and some other sound dampening and insulation underneath this plywood it's all gonna be very thin but it looks a lot better than it did and also right over here are all my trim pieces and dashboard and the doghouse and ashtray over there etc etc dashboard cluster gauge i'm using duplicolor and actually it's kind of like almost like a dye it's like a paint dye and we're turning all that black i'm also going to do that for the armrests etc and it's actually turned out really nicely that'll be a separate video i'm going to have on the channel it probably will be already up is my guess so the van's looking great i do have my rims and tires on the back at least i'm uh, waiting on some calipers i'm going to redo the front brakes Safety first, folks, on an older van. The back drum brakes look really good. I actually plasti dip these. That will be a separate video on the channel. Now, the question I'm going to get asked, because I was the one asking it as well with the G30, G20 vans, is the G30 has a beefier suspension, and so you can fit some nice tires underneath. Now, these are the same size as the stocks, except they're wider, and they're just better looking. These are all trains. And the tire size on this is 245-75R16. Once again, 245-75R16. A 16-inch rim has to go around your back drum brakes on your G30. Once again, here's the stock. Look at those. If you just left them stock and painted them black, and then look at those things. Those just look like a 4x4 off-roader. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little spit shine. Now, the only problem is I'm trying to figure this out, and I might have to do a little bit of door angle grinding, is you guessed it. I did not think this was going to happen, and it's actually a little bit better with proper hand, but see this right here? This rubs up against the side of the tire. I can get the door, I mean, it's not hurting the tire at all, as you can see there, but see how it just rubs up against it? So I'm gonna have to get my angle grinder, grind out that whole bottom section. There's nothing there that's gonna get in the way. So, I mean, you gotta have your proper open door. Now, some guys over in the Netherlands, they actually gold wing this. That is a possibility. That would be actually really sick. Now, if it could go both directions, gold wing or slide back, that would be pretty cool as well. See, the only problem about gold wing is if for some reason you couldn't load your groceries up in the back and you had to do this and you were like in an urban setting where this couldn't lift up, then you're not 
you know, it'd just be a little awkward. Still cool nonetheless. Okay, I am really digging it now that you get everything out. So let's go around back. So let's bring up this plywood, see what we have underneath. Broom and shop back this up. Folks, we're gonna be right back to the video, but I do wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Manscaped. You're mostly familiar with them because of their Lawnmower 4.0. Besides their body hair trimmer, also have solid new products that I've been using for a while now. We have body wash right here, a nice big 16 ounce body wash daily shower gel and this is their buff bundle with body wash it has two body washes and a body buffer which is really sweet you have this kind of like you know what we're used to for the back of our phones here you can put that between your fingers here and then on this side we have nice body scrubbing right there for exfoliation your back chest you get the idea there that is rubberized and has a little hook right there where you can hang that up to dry in your shower that again is the body buffer and on top of that great news manscape is giving you guys 20 percent off whatever you purchase and free shipping when you use my my direct link which is in the description box top link right below the video in the description box doesn't matter whatever you order the new buff bundle crop mops for van life is really nice especially if you don't have a shower in your van chapstick I use every night they have a ton of new products so whatever you order 20% off and free shipping when you use my direct link that 20% will automatically be applied thank you so much to manscape for sponsoring this video and enjoy your products. All right, so here I'm gonna show you, I have my shop vac going the whole entire time while I'm using my drill with a rust removal in the end of my drill. The reason I'm using a corded drill, you'll blow through battery packs super fast, especially trying to get up all the rust in the middle here. So what I'll be doing is I'll be grinding, as you can see right here, and then the shop vac in theory, which it actually did a pretty decent job, the dust goes up, it sucks into the shop vac, and number one also, as you can see right here, I am using ear protection, I'm using a high-end 3M mask, and I'm using full goggles. I definitely do not wanna breathe this in or get this in my eyes, and I wanna wear ear protection just listening to some music because this corded old drill is a little bit loud as well as the shop vac. So as you can see here, there was a lot of rust in between the seats. I actually pulled out the seats and I grinded all the rust up and then I'm gonna be putting rust, two-in-one rust remover and reformer on top of this. We'll be doing a little bit of patchwork, etc. We gotta do the job right. We have a big, nice, empty shell minus the trash can and gym mat right here and my lovely temporary seat. I have pulled out, we're gonna go around there in just a second. I've pulled out both seats. I have a swivel seat ordered and on the way. I also have my Max Airfan Deluxe smoke top to it. The one with the remote control right over here as well. We'll be installing that. So unfortunately, there was a lot of rust. Good news is all the mechanical stuff has been fixed and we did a lot of work on the engine. So right here now, I'm using Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 Reform and Seal. This stuff's not the cheapest. I think it's about like $11.99 for a 12 ounce can. It says rusted or bare metal application, but if you read the directions, it actually states that it wants you to get down to bare metal. But it says rusted or bare. I'll leave that up to you. So I spent about, oh goodness, about two and a half days grinding this. And as you can see here, all my grinds right here, this is just like, see this right here? That's just small little surface rust. And the reason I haven't done that one is because I'm still contemplating putting in a skylight or not, which I believe I'm going to. But all this down the area here, I cleaned all this up. A little bit of dirt and grime. We'll go ahead and clean that up a little bit more with isopropyl alcohol. So I actually I actually used a gator brush, a four inch gator brush, which I highly recommend. This is a wire brush. I originally started with these 3M light rust and paint remover. Now for light rust, yeah, absolutely. It's quick and easy for a large surface area. So I actually started with 3M and this particular one right here is a large area paint and rust stripper. And though it did a good job, it wears down really quickly compared to a wire brush. 
And then I also bought the light rust and paint remover, which was kind of useless to be honest with you. And these things run like 10 bucks each. I burned through five of these and actually had to finish the job with this Gator one. And this thing is like, I think like five, six bucks. And that will last you pretty much the entire job. And what I like about it, so small like this, this is pretty much the same size as the light rust one. This large one, it works, but again, it just burns it down way too quickly. And so I would skip out on those. Instead, I'll link it in the description box below. Once again, Gator brush. This just goes into your power drill. And I would actually recommend not using a battery powered one. Try to find a, an electric variable speed. Do yourself a favor, put it on high, push the trigger, and just let that thing do its business. So much easier. Again, I burned through five of the large ones at 10 bucks a piece. That was 50 bucks. This thing could have done the whole job for, again, five to seven bucks. So note learned on that particular job. And the reason why is because I had to do doors. Again, this was a work van. This has some door rust on the bottom here. Again, this is Colorado. We get snow. Let's go ahead and open up this right here. So this... And let me try to get the shot without the sun. This was absolutely nonsense right here. This was all caked on. And it's not 100% perfect. A lot of this is just, I mean, so caked on. I've been over this like three different times. And... I'm gonna live with it because I'm gonna do the twin one over the top of it. But before I do it to some of these sections, I'm gonna be using the Bondo repair patch kits and fiberglass Bondo for like this here, for this here. So stay tuned for that. As you can see here, a lot of rust because what they do is the workers got in with their boots, all soaking wet with snow on them, drenched through the carpet, ran underneath the carpet. You guys get the idea. And then just over the years, this is a 96. This typically happens to work vans right around, especially this area. So as you can see, that's why I burned through so many of those 3M1s, working my way all the way to the back there, ceiling here, ceiling here. And what the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 is gonna do, it's a rubberized coating. It's gonna coat that to stop any more prevention. It's going to stop the rust and prevent it from spreading even more, but I wanted to grind as much as I can off for further peace of mind. So that was a lot of grinding, like I said. So if you are wondering, I've blown through did uh, this door here, uh, the area here, what we can see here, just the front portion of it right here so far. I burned through about a can and a quarter. It goes on really easy and really thick, but you will burn through cans so definitely buy accordingly. This is my second can, but I had about a fourth left because I did my air filter holding box, I'm gonna call it, casing, whatever you wanna call it, housing. So I got a lot more spraying to do, but that feels really good to get all that rust up front. And here are the seat pedestals, which I need to clean the bottom of them. They're a little rusted on the bottom. I'm gonna spray the same Rust-Oleum on the base pedals, and this thing is gonna be drivable before we know it. Okay, now it's time for patchwork here. Again, we're gonna be using bond self-adhesive body patch. I'll go ahead and link this in the description box below of the video. A little gap here, as you can see from my finger, we're gonna be using the body patch over this. On both sides, I've grinded the bottom side and sanded it as well on the bottom of the vehicle. So both sides look like this. Before we do cut it down to size, I'm gonna go ahead and use isopropyl alcohol. I only have 70%, and this will do just fine. If you can, try to get the 91%. I've already cleaned the bottom side. I'm doing it with lint-free cloth rags. I'm going to go ahead and clean all the areas that I'm going to be using Bondo on as well because not only am I going to be doing the patchwork, I'm going to be using the Bondo. And so I'm going to go ahead and just take my time. And where I'm going to be using the Bondo is just on areas like this. I might, because I have two self defeated body patches, I might use it on this. On this, I'm going to be using a big square on this maybe even overlapping over to this area here. So maybe one big square here. As you can see here, I just wanna reinforce both sides because that's a little weak right there. This is obviously really weak. 
and this is really weak here as well and that's where you would put your foot the edge of the seat comes right down right here it just became so corrosive from the snow on their boots the workers okay so let's go ahead and number one clean it and then we'll get into the patchwork in bondo and if you are wondering each packet does come with two sheets which i was unaware and i cut through both of them but i gotta do the same patch the same underside so it works out just fine just be aware of that and you might be able to purchase one less now it's not sticking down as well as i'd hoped i mean it's sticking down it's just not completely like in the crevice and then out of the crevice but directions say you you want to conform it to the the body and that's okay because when I put on the fiberglass bondo meant for half inches or more it's gonna spread on and it's gonna go in there with the other side and then I'm gonna go ahead and smooth it over with my smoothers which I'll show you here in just a second but you just cut it with household scissors not that big of a deal at all so let's press on the flat sections adhesive much better than these sections just because there is a groove in here as well so just understand for flat sections like this that's gonna hear really nicely especially with a clean surface with that ice propyl alcohol all right so i have all my little strips cut out we're looking real good if there are any edges or anything like that sticking up press it down before you do put the bondo on obviously the bondo will go on heavy smooth out you'll sand it a little bit i'm not too concerned with how smooth that is because the carpet's just going to lay over the top of it and i did it on the bottom side as well the best i could all right let's take a look at the bondo fiberglass for half inch again they do sell one that comes for holes that are larger than an inch but again we have our patch kit underneath this it turns this like aqua color it's kind of this mush marsh green and once you add the blue hardener it kind of turns this like kind of an aqua color like you see here spread it on flat surfaces with your little bondo scraper works great underneath the car it is a little bit different of a story as well with some of the trim areas here it's just really hard to get that flat now word of the wise read the directions don't add more hardener or it's going to go very quickly on you and it's going to be extremely hard to work with and so again i'm not going to sand this down i did remove one high spot that was a little bit sharp and the only reason i even removed that is again because carpets going to lay over this but i'm going to be using some sound dampening material on the top of this but we still need to seal this and so what we're going to be doing is again we're going to be using the rust-oleum two-in-one i ran out of spray cans so i actually have another can but overall we're looking pretty good again on both sides below is looking like this just a little bit rougher than this but it doesn't really matter it's underneath but i will be spraying that as well so let's go back and look at my can so right here i have my top shank spray gun doesn't really matter what kind of spray gun you have definitely use a respirator during the whole bondoing process it stinks there's cancerous materials in all this stuff i mean there's cancerous materials in pretty much anything these days i actually have crappy gloves because it's like the only gloves that don't have cancerous material in the gloves so this is what I got this time. This is gonna be cheaper, but you will need to add a little bit of mineral spirits, it says, to maybe mix it down just a little bit. And so I'm gonna pour this in here. I'm gonna see how thin it is right off the bat, but the directions say if you do use a spray gun. Now you could use a roller or a paintbrush and do this same method. This is just so much easier. And the reason I went with spray cans is because the spray can actually does a really great job honing in. This is gonna get a little bit more kind of wish-washy, so it's gonna take a little bit of protectant plastic or cardboard when I get closer to the engine area there. So I might go ahead and add a few ounces, maybe an ounce to start with, mix it up, see how the gun does with mineral spirits. I don't wanna to go too thin on this. And I put two coats on, but I actually found, I mean, it was, it's totally fine if you have a lot of space to do and it's like, you know, without these nooks and crannies, but I found the spray can to be a lot, you know, pretty direct and precise, especially putting a little bit of a barrier. I just grabbed like a little piece of cardboard and sprayed around the edges here. It did a great job spraying on, especially with a fuller can on the roof. And this is a older van, so I wanted to do it right. I did do two coats, especially where it was pretty rusty like I said up here and some of the wheel wells in some of the corners this is Colorado we get a lot of snow but for some hairline scratches I went a little bit over the top for even bare hairline scratches I just did like one coat over it but for anything that was rusted now 
Now I will be using it also down below on more rusted areas that I can't really get a wire brush in there. But for the inside, I wanted to clean it up a little bit over the top, which I think it did a great job. It's been on here for quite a while now, sticking true, not peeling up at all or anything like that. It's a great product. Just make sure you use eye protection and a respirator. You definitely do not want to be breathing this stuff in. And also if you have a lot of rust, like under your seats, like I had in my van, I went through many more more cans than you're anticipating, including the underside and a little bit of fender work I'm going to do right here, or door work I should say. I probably have blown through about nine cans or so, including the underbody once I'm all said and done. The two coats definitely suck up more paint as well. Obviously time will tell, but I'm hoping it'll look just like that in 10 years if I still have the van. Now I'm working on Kill Mat, which is sound deadening mat, and this is 80 mil, and this is a really good product. What this is gonna do, it's not gonna create these jinglings when you're slamming your doors, when your van is bumping around on the streets. You're not gonna hear all that nonsense. What guys do is they do this for their radio as well. If their radio bass hits, if there's rattles, this will definitely handle it nicely. I'm going to be putting it on the roof. I'm going to be putting it on the walls. I'm going to be putting it underneath my chairs as well. And we'll walk you through the steps on my wheel wells. I wrapped them really good all the way around. I still need to do this little portion right here. I got one back door done. And when I close it, it doesn't have that hollow metal sound. So this is a great product as well. Highly recommend it. I'll have it linked in the description box below as with all my other van life builds and tools. So check that out when you want to. In part three, folks, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about installation tips for the kill mat and show you that more in depth as well as the other layer of sound dampening and insulation I'm going to lay on top. So make sure you are subscribed for part three and beyond. And a little sneak peek, I have ordered my Dometic Hecky 2 Skylight as well, which is huge and awesome. We're taking this budget van and turning it into a big time beautiful project. So on your way out, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, it helps the channel, the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you. Once again, your links are below. We will see you in the next video. Take care for now. Bye-bye.